Hello boys, it's me, Cool Yoshi here, and welcome back to my 100% blind playthrough of the new Pokemon Snap for Nintendo Switch. In the last episode, we left off going into Duras, into the Shiver Snowfields Day, finishing that area, and now we're going to continue by trying to finish off Shiver Snowfields at night time. This time around, though, we are not going to leave any stone unturned here, so we're going to try and also get all of the star photos for each of the individual Pokemon. This might take a little while, so we'll pause to make sure we get them all. So anyways, um, I'm kind of doing these individually right now because I want to get Suicune and I guess maybe Alorus. Along with this one last request we have it done in this area, done first. And then I'll do the others as I need to. I know for sure I need to do Flash Mop, so I'll make sure to get those of that. I did get a two-star photo of it at one point, but it's being kind of tricky to get a good photo of. The only thing I haven't gotten from it is its free star. And that's what I know. And I'll actually check my photo decks early to see if I, uh... Have all have anything not completed. I won't do my usual thing though that I usually do. In fact, I'm probably just gonna check it off screen because you probably wouldn't want to see that happen. This part is starting to get really unnecessary. I just like doing it because that way I can get Suicune to pop up later, but um it's mostly just a thing I've habit I've gotten into. Since again, um, it does take quite a little bit while to remember where everything is. And I will be doing the same thing for Shiver Snowfield's Day, by the way. It's not the only thing I'll be doing. I think I have an idea of which Pokemon I've missed, but it's kind of tricky to get them all. Okay, so for this second part, it's actually pretty straightforward. I just have to zoom through this cave, pretty much ignoring everyone here. Yes, including the ancient ruins, because when I get to the end, the only thing I care about is this Avalog on the side. So this left Avalog is the one we actually need. That one will swim in the player's direction and eventually swim onto land. Okay, so this Avalog is going to eventually go up and start walking. Once it goes in my direction, I have to start throwing Fruffer to have one land on its back. kind of tricky. This is who I were focusing on. Oh, jeez, I moved my camera around so shakily, I'm not sure if I get... Okay, well, maybe that one will work better. Uh, that was really awkward. Good to see you. Okay, so as long as a fuff fruit lands on its back, it'll do its pose. Okay, I, I think this is what I want. Alright. I think that is exactly what I want. Right. Now we'll focus entirely on Suicune. And there's our last request completed. Yes. Got that out of the way. Right. So we're going for Suicune first, followed by uh, the 
forget. Not, I actually don't remember if I got the Aurorus or not. Might have to just simply wait later to do that. Hmm. Anyway. We're focusing on Suicune. That's the only part that really matters. We got its one and three star poses. Now we need its four and two stars. All right. Yeah, we still have to do the same thing here, unfortunately. Uh -huh. <laughs> just like the way Frost last reacts to that, just, <laughs> just classic. Uh, <laughs> like what? <laughs> what did you just do? <laughs> She's like, what did you just do, honey? <laughs> okay, so it's actually pretty straightforward. We just have to do the same exact thing as we did before, but once Suicune appears, we have to throw an Illumina Orb at it to trigger it to do another pose later on. Then we have to throw another Illumina Orb at it, right as it's about to growl at Delibird, and I'll do its four-star pose. We have to get it to do its four-star pose twice in order for this next part to work. Very tricky. If not one of the trickiest parts. Now we just wait on Jinx to appear. Toss the Luminor about it. You can tell it's correct when the hair glows. That's what you need. Alright. And that's really nothing, there's really nothing else to do. Just make, we just have to make it cast Blizzard, then take uh, the Illumina Orb. Then we need to make it react to Fluff Fruit later. Which is called the On Alert Nose. This can be kind of tricky to hit. So, okay, that has to be a retry there. It can be kind of tricky to hit if you are not aiming correctly like me. That was absolutely terrible aim, so now we have to try again. Fortunately, this area will almost always be slow because whenever we try and go past these Mayana, they must always do this chase no matter what. They always do this, unfortunately. A lot of waiting. Well, at least we got this first start done. Thankfully, the first steps of this are pretty free. Second time we've had to do that now. We'll wait to make sure she fully goes into the route. We're not sure if that doesn't do anything, but as far as we know, 
The jinx seems to only show up when you uh, do these specific routes. So for safety, we're kind of just doing the exact same thing we've been doing for the last bit. And yes, we did see Suicune stop in our last video. We just missed it with the fluff fruit that one time. Now we have to try it again. Hopefully the second time around we can actually hit it with an Illuminorb. It'll only stop if you hit it with an Illuminorb. It won't stop with anything else. Again, the Jinx Hair Glow is what you want. That is what will cause it to summon Suicune. I'm gonna do what I did last time. I'm just Sam the app battle the button when he appears. As long as you use an Illuminorb on the Jinx at least once, that will cause him to turn around and summon him. That's the only way Suicune can appear. And there are other Pokemon that could potentially get in the way. That's a hit. There we go. And for safety, I'm just going to mash the app out of the button here. Hitting it multiple times. So we hit on it at the moment it does that. What we need is it for it to trigger a secondary effect. Yeah. <laughs> like that. And here's your alternative pose. It, for the alternative pose, it actually has to be very fast. Nice. I didn't see if I got a good roller sun. So I'll go ahead and do this. While we're waiting. I know I got Alaris' 4-star, and I got his 2-star, I think, in a different video. But I don't know what I did the next time, so I'll just start taking photos of it as it appears. Oh, nice! Okay. I, I like this frame the best. We're gonna select that one. Again, the hours don't really matter. Okay. Oh, wow, that's actually the 3-star, huh? Okay. Well, this might be a little bit easier than I thought. If we can get one of them to hit on the head, we should be able to get the two-star there. So it's probably not actually as bad as I thought. Whenever you're missing a two-star most of the time, you could just either use a scan to make them react to something else. Or something else. That was a good score despite not being zoomed in there. So that's, that's his full Blizzard cast. And during that entire animation, you have to throw a fruit fruit out for its second pose. And that will cause it to react to that. That's its on alert pose. Not a really good way to time that, except you have to wait until after that. And yes, I am going towards that. Okay, back into this again. I actually completely forgot to take the photo of Smoth on the repeat, so I'll go ahead and take a photo of it just kind of chilling on the sides. From what I heard, that tends to be a freestyle pose. It just waiting on nines. Because it doesn't seem like it would eat a fluff root, and... We already got its other poses, so maybe that'll be its free star pose. If not, then we'll get it later. And I'm glad I checked on Aurora, so now I know that we need a two star pose, which means we'll potentially have to either scan or hit it with something else, or maybe even play a melody for it if that doesn't work. And yes, after you free the Aurora, that's Aurora, unless. That's already there for the beginning. It causes a Narrowaurus to appear a little bit later. I'm gonna take a photo of Proud Bowel to check if I got it so star or not. I think I'm in a point where Fresh Slash is almost complete. 
I'm pretty sure I don't have its four star though, so when I do this next attempt, I'm gonna spam take a quick few photos of Frostlass. Because it'll momentarily disappear and then reappear in a different spot. I've been trying to get photos of it before. I think this second ice cave though is the only place where you can do it really efficiently. Actually, now I think of it, that might be in the other one. But you never know. I know. Actually, now I think of it, that that was in daytime, wasn't it? So, yeah, that means this, that floss last literally does nothing at all. Okay. I am very fast with hitting it with an Illuminorb, so at least I've gotten that part down. So yeah, so you need two Illuminorbs. One as... One as it gets near Delibird. Again, it seems easier to just smash the button just to make sure you get the actual orb. Though for some Pokemon, if you do that, that'll interrupt them. Suicune, it doesn't seem to do anything to him, so... Yeah, let's do that. And now we're just waiting. <laughs> Sometimes it can take a really long time for certain Pokemon to make show their faces. Okay, we got it. That's a hit. Now it'll stop. I'll actually stay zoomed out for this entire next part. So I can see where it goes. Alright, now... Oh! What? Ooh, I've not hit it at the right time, apparently. That's a reset, unfortunately. Yeah, that will happen occasionally. Ugh. Knew I should have mashed that button a bit harder. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, I don't want everyone to go for this section, so I'll be back when I'm back at the beginning of that. Alright guys, I'm back after an epic fail, sorry. I just didn't want to show me self, myself going for the same exact course to get back to that point. So we're going to attempt that again. Hopefully we actually get Suicune to cast Blizzard this time. It seems easy, but uh, when you kind of forget that is the Lumina Orb timing is actually kind of precise when it does its Lerar. It's really annoying. In fact, I think that one moment where I didn't throw an Illuminor about it count did is actually the proper timing. Oh great, now I'm gonna miss it. Oh great. That was just lame. <sighs> Alright guys, we are back after that pathetic attempt at throwing the orb. Hopefully I can actually aim properly this time. Let's see if this works this time. I'm not cutting that out because that I think that was a funny reaction. What I feel really annoyed about is the fact that I got that first rough fruit throw very easily, no problem, and then I just for some reason miss it on this try for some reason. It's so stupid the way that works. Okay, there we go. That's a hit. That's what we were trying to get before, but for some reason we didn't get that. Now we just wait for it to go near the area, which I'll do later, and I'm gonna just mash the crap out of the Lumino Orb until it does that, and now we'll do this, and there we go. As you can see, it'll react to the fluff root, and it can actually eat it. That's nice. <laughs> so, we actually have a couple of alter poses we can go for. Okay, now let's see what you do. Oh. I like how when they get hit, instead of them turning green to show they're happy, they turn to red to show that uh, something bad has happened. So yeah, that's kind of funny. Okay, let's make sure I do this properly, and that should hopefully be our two-star. Easy as that. Good to see you. All we needed to do was have a Fafu on the ground after it was finished casting Blizzard, supposedly. Oh, really? Oh, 
Wow. I was just a bit too late on that. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, I don't care anymore, because we got uh, the Aurora's two-star, and that's all that matters. So at least we didn't get nothing out of this one. Okay, so I'll probably look off... Oh. Okay, so now I see what I need. I need Frost Slash, three star, and four star poses. Which will probably have to be gotten in a different course, but I'll still look at it. But, uh. Okay, I need to. I need to still go for this, so I'll show the Professor of Falls, and yeah. So there you kind of saw how we, um, got that entire pose done. We see. You see now how the two star poses trade. It's kind of tricky. Very annoying also, but um, we were a little bit late there, so as with the classic, whenever we fail those, we're probably going to turn on boast mode and just go ham, so I'll be right back when I actually get the photo this time. Hello boys and girls, <laughs> I'm back, we finally got the pose to appear, like I said, is very brutal. You have to get it right as he reacts to the fluff root. Again, another very precise fall. I didn't actually use that for stuff, but I've decided to uh, go ahead and take extra photos of the Pokemon. The only reason for this is I want to see what I'm missing. So right now I need Dugon's free star, Cub Chew's four star, Frostmoth's free star. Niplop Stun, as well as Deli Bird and Mightyana. I was just checking these to make sure they are fully done. Four star is needed for Bear Tech. We need the four star for Sanchez. And we need the three star and four star for those for Flosslass. So now this is where um, things are going to get a little bit interesting. So I've currently trying to set up a guide on how to get all these. And I'm kind of just going to go around and do them all one by one. And hope to complete them. So that's about it. There's not a lot else to do. And I know I need Vanillux's four star as well. As with many of these, I'm gonna do this one Pokemon at a time. But also try and get others as I go through. Again, you don't know if some of these guys will only appear on research level one or only do their specific foes in a different area, like Jinx, for example, in that one spot, you probably missed it, but when I was going for another request, Jinx actually does his four-star pose as part of something else. So anyways, I'm going to pull up fast lasses. That's why I do that. Alright. Okay, so from what I found out, this is the first one of the special bonus setups where I cannot get um, specific uh, star poses for it until it goes into daytime. So I'm actually going to just set up and do anything else. Also, I'm so glad we no longer have to do the stupid Jinx Fae every time. But I will still do that because... I have a chance to get... Oh, wait. Actually, now I think of it. That won't matter. Alright, so... The Frost Moth foe is actually a lot easier than you think. You just have to hit it with... An, uh, if a Fluff Root to make it uh, vanish like that. If you make any of them vanish, you can then feed them later in the course. And that's the idea of that. And that finishes their... Um, Star poses. It's actually fairly straightforward. The next one I want to check though is I want to see if there's a Vulpix 4 star because there is one that's a little bit different. Okay, so we're in the main area, and I did find one thing that was a little bit interesting that only appears in this course. I'm also 
not sure. Let's see. I can probably get them to counterattack by bonking them on the head, maybe. Uh, hmm. Uh, maybe if I play a melody for them. Uh, I'm trying, but I'm not sure if I could get Vanillax's four star photo here yet. Alright. This is kind of tricky. So, they'll actually clear themselves out of the way normally if you do that other stuff. If not, they'll actually bonk each other. And yes, the hoot will actually bonk through each other. So, yeah, you see this Piplup here that they were trying to do some specific stuff? Yeah. In order to get at uh, that particular four-star photo, you have to get the photo of it. And wake up the spiel yourself. Otherwise, they will block the race and actually interrupt them. That's why they get angry. Which you saw happen multiple times in other videos. But if you bonk them awake, then uh, you'll actually get Votepix's four-star pose when you do that. Okay, now the next part is pretty straightforward. Just throw a couple of fluff food down in the ground. And eventually he'll slowly go over towards it and eat it. This does take a little while. Nice. So we'll... Oh, I didn't take that as of both of its hoses. And there we go. And we don't actually have a way to escape this. So for the next bit, we're just going to let the thing take us to the end. Since that's the first time we took that route. And we'll be able to check what happens afterwards. Alright. Let's see here. Okay, we got the two important ones we were going for. Nice. Thankfully, the uh, Frost Moth beating a Fluff Fruit one is pretty easy to attain once you get that done. It's the one after that that can be kind of tricky. And just like before, I'm going to check all the other star poses as I go on here. That's something you don't see every day. Vault picks is completed now. Congratulations, you filled in the page for Frostmoth. Alright. Okay. Okay, so Cub Chew's 4-star could actually be gotten as part of another request, which I think is kind of interesting. So, with that in mind, I'm just trying to think. Uh, by the way, uh, by the way, don't worry if I, it takes a little while for me to get into these videos, because I'm still trying to search up a lot of this stuff. Because, again, I want to know exactly where all of the characters' four-star poses are. So I can get to it later. Oh, wow. That's actually a different one. Okay, well, I, actually, before I do anything else... I think we got all the nighttime exclusives that I know about. And there's... Not a lot I know that I could potentially do. So, anyway. To get the rest of the Pokemon done, we have to go to Shiver Snowfield's Day yet again. Uh, the first... I'm not sure if I should do anything else right now, but for now...
Okay. So apparently one of the things I did for, with one of the our uh, ferrets was not actually a glitch at all. In fact, that was actually something completely different. It was, it's kind of strange, actually. As with many of these, I'm going to be focusing exclusively on trying to get uh, my two-star poses of the different Pokemon done. Or, I guess, just individual Pokemon there. So, I'm going for this one first because it's by far the trickier one. And just like I did from some of the other ones, we're going to turn Burst Mode on for all of these photos. So that way we can get them a little bit more consistently. Again, since this area has a lot of Susu Pokemon, I'm sure there's multiple Pokemon that you can only get... A certain area and if we want to get a good photo of this and we have to turbo mode straight to the area and wake up frostlass ourselves before um, the snow run does it can be kind of tricky if you're too slow he'll get wakened by something else okay well, I failed the first time, so I have to do that. Ugh. That was unfortunate. I went for that entire thing only to just, uh, completely mess up the attempt after that. By the way, I don't think I can actually do anything else except for this Pokemon on Research Level 2. Yeah, it's another one of those chilly uh, ones where the only way to get this particular photo is on Research Level 2. It's very sneaky the way they do that. But yeah. So there you saw what happens when we do an epic fail. What's supposed to happen is we go through a regular route after doing a different thing. And then... When we enter the cave, we're supposed to have, um, wake up, uh, the Frostlass ourselves. While we could take somewhere else, this secret area just happens to be the fastest known way of getting into the cave. Because the other area, like, uh, as you see, I get slowed down quite a bit, so this is literally just speedrun preference. Well, you have to be very fast at this. What do you have to hit? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's... oh where is it going? Okay, uh, that was obviously too late again. We have to do it again. My goodness, this is brutal. I know Sohan's trying to help, but we don't need your help right now, so uh, if anything, you're kind of messing us up. <laughs> we need to make sure that uh, he doesn't do that thing. Again, what we do in the alternate route does absolutely nothing. It'll literally change nothing. We could just go in here to... Trigger all the stuff here, and then do this other stuff. Once we get this four-star photo, we know I have to go on research level uh, two. This is exclusive for this particular attempt. 
Gosh dang it. I don't know why, but fresh, hitting fresh ass with a fluff food seems to be almost impossible. I'm not sure why, but it looks like it's being really difficult to wake up for some reason. And also, we got stuck. It's not good. I'm trying to get to the end, man. Oh, there we go. Now we woke him up manually. All right, that should be uh, good enough this time, hopefully. <laughs> Sheesh. Again, good thing I have burst mode, otherwise that would make the make an already hard follow even harder. Took an unnecessary amount of. Oh, wait, hang on. I don't want to finish without showing the follow of the depressor. I definitely need to get this four star. Which it should be. Yeah. Okay. Now this you don't see every day. Nice. All right, now we don't have to deal with that anymore. Hooray for not having to deal with annoying stuff. Oh gosh, that took way too long to do. At least in my eye, it took way too long. Hopefully this time uh, things are a bit different. A free star foe is pretty straightforward for him. Frost Last will just teleport around in different spots. Uh, when he takes Snowfield's Day, he'll potentially uh, teleport away, and that's the only uh, foe you have to get. It's pretty easy. You could just use Burst Mode to get it at the exact frame when it happens. But anyways, onto Snowfield's Day at max level, which again defaults to Research Level 3, and from here... From here, we'll kind of just focus and see if we can figure out ways to get the er uh, mm, on to do stuff. Good luck. Okay. Okay, so now that we're done with that, the next spots we have to do for the different stars is actually a lot more interesting. So Bear Tick is going to notice this Cub Chew, but I have to wait for it to pick up. Basically, the moment it picks it up, I'm snapping a photo and just hoping that I get a good frame on it. This one I'm not too worried about. There's multiple chances to get the Cub Chew 4 star, and yeah, that's about it. I think I can actually probably do a similar thing with the Bear Tick to get its 4 star. I just have to capture a photo of it doing the same thing, perhaps? I don't know. Okay, now for the second part. There's multiple attempts to get some of these, so I'm not too worried if I uh, miss anything here. Because I could just get it later. Okay. Alright. The only thing we can really do with this is just take a bunch of foes with burst mode, quit research, and hope that we get Frostlass's free star. It's about all we can hope for. This one's probably the tightest one to get, and we got it. Thank goodness. Alright. I'll just zoom to this. That I like more, so I'll do that. And nice. We got, uh, 
decent frame there. Okay, so that one was pretty easy to attain. So we got that out of the way. Now we need to get a happy sand slash as well as the four star bear tick I'm still kind of confused about. I'm kind of just going to guess what I have to do. And then my next focus will actually be Vanillux's four star. Alright. And yes, this foe can only be gotten on Snowfields Day, so I definitely know that uh, I have to do it in this specific manner. Okay, I'm gonna go for this one. Okay. Okay. All right. I like how it stops automatically, so we can only see this appear. All right. I think if I can include them in the pose I think I can get his four star but other than that I don't know uh, any other way of getting bear ticks four star but that's fine all right so the sand slash photo from what I found is actually very tricky to get and this is what I'm trying to get what you have to do is toss a spot at the exact spot that sand slash appears and if you do that, instead of reappearing and doing our stuff, Sansash will periodically jump out, do some our stuff. And then you can just have it do some our stuff. Okay. And yes, it'll only do that animation if you don't scan. So you pretty much have to know where that spot is. It ain't tells you, oh, you could just do something else, but that's not actually what you want to do in the guide. There's actually something else you want to do entirely. I forget if I need anything else, so I'll just kind of go to the end here. Okay, Glalie's complete, I think, already. I know Skymary and Snow White are also complete, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. Spiel's already complete. Oh yeah, I remember. So I did want to come over here because that one swine up we went all the way over to that secret area. We have to do the exact same thing again. We have to get the swine up to go all the way over to the area in that other spot. If you uh you can have it potentially just um oh wow, what the heck? Vulpix is trying to... Now Vulpix is getting in the way. Okay, well, actually, that works. Alright. The next part is actually kind of tricky. You have to throw fruit at it. And instead of it doing the thing, it'll periodically flip on its side instead. It's kind of strange, actually. It's really still at it. It's also a very sneakily hidden three-star pose that almost nobody knows about, probably. Oh, and yes, I also have to get Furret's four-star, which is in this area. So, again, I have multiple chances to get this. I'm just going to auto these. The tricky part of the Swinub's three-star is it has to be upside down, which it can only get after you hit it with a froth root. It's kind of tricky. Alright, good. We got one our Pokemon completed. 
Okay, so now I'm going for Ferret's Four Star next. And yes, there's no ways to get any of these Pokemon in the Ice Cave area. Okay, so apparently it's possible to toss the Fluffy at the Ferret to, of course, Ferret to my left at the start of this course. That's what actually caused the two Ferret to intimidate each other. It's really interesting, actually. Okay, so we're gonna into so we're gonna make this one run. That only happens after you. Yeah, with a fresh fruit. So this one will want to go in the hole, but before it can, it'll get stopped by another one. It's kind of strange. It's not a glitch. I probably should have said it was a glitch. They just intimidate each other. It's actually really cute once you actually see it in person. You get quite a little while to look at this too, so... You can go ahead and take multiple fulls of it while you wait. And there we go. That part is finally done. And yes, I am going back up to this spot again. And yes, the ice cave does not matter at all. That's the only thing that matters is matters is the part at the end where I have to get Swine Up onto its back. Again, I have plenty of time to get through this. So I'm using the time of the auto scroller to go and check which homes are where. Actually, that looks like it's at night. Hmm. I'm gonna have to move that vault fix so it goes in a different spot potentially. Is that one one thing that's caused the sign up to not appear? And also, it ran really far away. I'm gonna have to lead it back here. Okay, I have to do this multiple times. Okay, well, I was really late with that, so I'm gonna have to restart that and get that later. Okay, that looks kind of tricky. Good to see you. Oh, actually, the way this looks, I think this is actually at night, so that means all the stuff I was doing was literally its eye waste. Oh gosh, that's annoying. Alright, take the zoomed in photo. So, I guess that means the other part didn't matter anyway. Looks like we're gonna be going to night time anyways. And yes, I need night time to get the Vanillux 4 star, which is what I'm gonna be focusing on, and... 
Um, I also need something else as well. And I need to make it jump and land in the hot spring, but that's actually later. When in nighttime. Again, the game doesn't really tell you that you have to go to different courses, so it's very obnoxious. <laughs> when, I, uh, when I warned you guys that this might go on for like three videos, I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> so far, my, the past few videos have been just me running these two, the same two courses over and over again. Thankfully, once we get to Avaris... Since we are already almost done with a lot of that stuff, hopefully it shouldn't be as bad to do all the quests there. Okay. I like that out of fact, just whoa! I like that voice I'm pro from Professor uh, Mirror. Just, he looks absolutely surprised. <laughs> Did I interrupt your afternoon coffee or something? Because I certainly didn't expect that. Just like before, this will take a little while to get through. And yes, I'm having burst mode on for all of these again. Oh, goodness. Reloaded it. Oh, what? Did it twice in a row. Jeez, I'm not... I don't mean to do that. It... Sometimes I hate when this... When this website do just automatically reloads the area. Even though I'm not clicking on anything. Okay. Okay, there we go. To take a first star fall of Vilnox, proceed for the main real route of Snowfield's Night until you reach the cave. Toss a blue alarm with the crystal boom to make the Pokemon around it dance. Once the crystal boom is stopped, go in toss an arm no arm at the jinx closest to the exit. That jinx will then jump down beside Vanillox, and Vanillox will then release a rain of smoke. Okay, that's what I want. Alright, so I think I found this out an accident when I was looking for this before, so there's there are multiple things here. Now, the Swine Fall I get is at the end, so I can get both of these done at once. Alright, now we're gonna play it safe here. Didn't see what I hit. We have to wait until it stops glowing, which is a random time. Okay. Just mashing the crowd of foe button to make sure I uh, get that. Not gonna worry about this now. So now the, our only focus is on the swine up but the end. We can use the lumina orbs to make them land in the hot spring, and that's it. Oh, speaking of which, there it goes. There we go. Oh, one of them ends up on Mammal Sign's head. Oh gosh, it was just a little bit too late. Wow, that went that took so long to do. I'm not sure if I even got that to work. All right. At least I know how to get it, but still. Mammal Slime literally got in the way there, by the way. Oh, it still counted. 
I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be flipped over then. That's good. So as you hit it, that will also work, apparently. I'll take that one. There we go. That We got exactly what we wanted to do. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I guess it's a lot earlier than I thought. None of these are needed for a quest. I'm just doing these to complete the photo deck entries for these specific Pokemon. Also, now that I'm done with this, I can finally check off some of my other stuff and then I'll finally be able to move on to the snow cave tomorrow. Which will be nice. Been waiting for a while to get through that one. Certainly did take a while for me to get through that particular part. Ouch. And yes, when I said this game was kind of tricky to 100%, I mean it was really hard. Like, ugh. So far it's been really difficult to do all the other stuff. Virtually the only one I actually ended up completing that we can collect is the one from... Oh, I must have went past it. Oh, there it is. Sheer face. Ah, you did see it. I like it's usually so level-headed. It's a bit surprising to see it like this. Alright. That's it. I'm not gonna actually check anything, because I've not done all the other stuff in Duris yet, so... It'll still be a, quite a while before I do any fails, so leave a like if you enjoyed, though. Cut, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!